Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Super Hamster Plays Kingdom Death Monster. As ever, do me a favour, hit the thumbs up button on this video. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Help me take over YouTube one subscriber at a time. And more importantly, you won't miss the rest of this series or any of my other series. In the last video, we essentially assembled large chickens, tail, chest, legs. Uh, we also put together this piece, which we'll get to later, and stuck the thumbs on the wing pieces, which again, we'll get to later. We assembled this mustache and beard. We've trimmed up all the pieces and we're now ready to start assembling the face, this area here. Um, you probably won't be able to make them out from this side, but we have larger beak with tongue. That's the lower beak. We have upper beak, which is smaller, doesn't have a tongue. We have this piece, which is easiest way to describe it would be old man slash dwarf face with square socket in the front for mustache. And that leaves us with these two pieces, which for ages I was looking at and couldn't work out what they were, but basically they're the side of the phoenix's head. So they're these pieces here. And they have its eyes, of which it has oh, just to be creepy. I've laid them in that order because that's the order we're going to go. We'll start by adding the bottom. Then we'll add the, as you look at it, we'll add the bottom piece. Then we'll add the right hand side of the face. Again, as you look at it, so it's actually the left side of this guy, but as we're looking at it on the right, then we'll add the left, then we'll add the face in the middle, and then we'll add the beak over the top. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of nooks and crannies and crevices and hard lines and things in this one, and everything should just slot into place. And if you do it in that order, you'll be fine. So first things first, we're going to add this one. So, a bit of cement on the underside. A bit of cement on the underside of this one. And there we go. You can't see the join because it's quite nicely hidden inside rolls of fat and skin and general unpleasantness, but yeah, so we now have a jaw. Take this side, and you'll know it's this side because it's got quite a hard angle on it. Can you see it there? Yeah, quite a hard edge to it. And that sits in that recess there. Again, you'll get it in the right place because it basically clicks into place. Slightly more visible joint, but I'm pretty sure that will be covered up with the paint. Dab on the inside just to seal it. And a quick one. Brush over the outside just to seal that joint. Next side, other half of base. Should just slot in there. Yep, that's going to work nicely. Connecting the body and the two halves of the head that we've already attached, and including the beak. So that's not what I wanted to do. That side. Again, slightly more visible joint, but I'm pretty sure it's thin enough that the paint will sort that. Worst case will be a slight brushing over with some liquid green stuff. Old man dwarf face slots into the gap in the middle. So we'll do that one next. Uh, 
and there is it doesn't go all the way down there is a as, as you can see there's a slight overbite there as he's layering and glaring and you should be able to line up again the creases in the skin and a fault in the in the fat and so forth so that should do there um, the upper beak going over the top like that so again joining the two halves of the head and the old man dwarf face hidden inside and I've just got cement on my fingers Phoenix now has its very ugly face within its face. Quick brush over the top, so try and hide that join. And then you have it. Face within a beak. Yeah, that mustache sits in there. But I don't actually want to put it on until I've got this thing mounted up on its base. But we can get this little chin beard, and there's a little groove in the underside of the beak, and it's essentially the, the beard is sweeping back. And it'll only fit one way. So tap on there, good tap on there. Lining everything up, checking both sides, and that pretty much covers the joint. But that's fine. Chicken of Death is here doing its thing. I have decided I'm not going to pin this one because I think if I leave it overnight, they'll actually weld up quite nicely. And worst case scenario is that joint's going to fail and break. And start to come away in which case I'll just separate it by using the polystyrene cement and I'll pin it afterwards because um, it's probably going to be a few weeks before I come around to painting this guy so if I just leave him set up sat around and we'll see what happens with the weight and if it slowly starts to sink back like that then I'll rethink it but for now I'm going to stick him upside down I'm going to stick this like that so that it's actually only hold those joints are now only holding up that weight and not that weight again just like the uh, when we put the tail on quite an important joint so I want to make sure I get plenty of cement on there so that it's still malleable when uh, I stick the pieces together. But the second one should just be a quick splash. Because it'll, the first one sort of gets soaked in a bit and makes everything more, more willing to, uh, to grab it. you're going to see so again that's the piece I want to get right and that also I think is going to need some green stuff work not a lot but 
that is a visible joint. It's certainly visible enough that it'll stand out if I don't. So. That will be our giant chicken. He's doing his thing. Nope. We'll leave him like that. I'll leave him overnight doing his thing. And we'll come back to him. Still be this video. Um, for me, it's going to be overnight. For you, a few seconds. But yeah. Okay, so the uh, the ankle joints have set quite nicely, and although I want to leave them for a, a few more, you know, leave them overnight before I actually put any real weight through it, they seem plenty sturdy enough, and I don't think I'm going to have to pin him after all. So uh, we can get stuck in on his, his moustache and his beard, or his moustache to finish off his beard, add his hands, and then the final part will be sticking on the wings, mounting him to the base so he's all centralised on the base. And uh, then I'll have to do a separate video just going through, sticking all of these things on, which should be interesting. But yeah, so we'll get the, uh, the rest of him finished up. So we'll start with uh, his moustache, because I think his hands are going to come around it, and it's going to be under there, so... It's just the one little hole in uh, under the dwarf face's nose, which then lines up with the lug on the inside of the moustache. Push said lug into said hole. Job done. that. Yeah. That hand is going to come up and over. And again, these are single pieces and it's just the right hand on the right side. The uh, There's at least three faces to each of the sockets, so getting them to line up should be pretty straightforward. wrong because they're supposed to be down not up. I just want to make sure I line them up but I also want to dry fit the wings to make sure I'm not obscuring those so that one yeah you fit in quite nicely Go up a smidge on there, so he's fine. And then the one on this side doesn't actually interfere with with the wing at all. So It's creepy about big hands and things that shouldn't have hands. But whatever it is, I'm hoping I, I get over it soon because one of the uh, models we'll be building in the future is the spider who's just got long arms, spindly arms and massive long spindly hands. But yeah, there's the giant death chicken with his hands. And his moustache. It's going to be him there. Yeah. That's him done. For now. Leave him to set for a little while. And then maybe we'll stick on the wings. 
and come back from that. See you soon. Welcome back. I hope you all enjoyed the rest. I mean, it's been two days, three days since uh, I stuck this guy's tash and his arms on. Uh, for you, hopefully it's only just been a few seconds. But I'm now going to go ahead and stick the wings on. And I'm going to start with this one, which of the two has a much larger tab. And the reason being is I'm hoping it'll support itself whilst I'm doing the other one. But yeah, there's just a case of slotting into the right socket. So copious amounts of cement on this one, copious amounts on this one, push two together. I've already trimmed the pieces up and uh, added the thumbs on a previous video. I can't remember if that was earlier today or in the last part. Like I said, I say earlier today, I mean earlier this episode, you know what I mean. And it's been, this build's been spread over about a week to give the, uh, the cement enough time to set properly. Consequently, can't remember exactly what order what was done in. So. And then I'm probably going to leave him. I say him. No, it must be a him. He's got moustache. Um, I'm going to leave him to set for another few days. And then we'll come back and do the... Uh, the hand tutorial on all of these little pieces. Yeah, it seems to be a pretty good joint. It hides quite nicely. And then this one. Let's say much shallower pin on this one, but it, the uh, the socket has got four very flat sides to it so mm -hmm. I'm very much looking forward to seeing this guy assembled and painted up and on the table being hopefully picked apart by four well-painted, well-armed, well-trained survivors. But somehow I don't think that's going to be the case. And then we'll just push those into their respective sockets. I just can't get over how big this piece is. All the other monsters we've fought, you know, have been. I mean, the lion, I think, is the biggest one so far. Everyone else has just been a slightly tall guy on a big base, or. I mean, the antelope's quite spindly, so it's all sort of reared up, so it's tall, but it's not particularly bulky. And the lion was a decent size compared to the, uh, the survivors, but this is just huge. And there you have him. It is just colossal. Yeah, there's one. Give me a survivor. There we go. Hmm. Yeah. A uh, little bit outgunned. Hopefully he's nice, and he doesn't want to eat us at all. He just wants to be friends, and he's misunderstood. Uh, but that we will have to find out in another episode. When we come to actually face him. But yeah, I'm going to leave this guy to set for another couple of days, and then I'll come back and do the uh, fitting of the hands. 
which is going to be a lot of work for a small amount of detail. But it needs to be done. Can't have all these big holes all over the place. And, you know, it's just not creepy without that many hands, so... Let me stand up. Not quite, so we'll do that. Yeah? Yeah. Yes, he will stand up, but he's off camera, so... The comparison is the 100 mil base. We'll be sticking him on something like that. But yeah, so we'll leave this guy to set, and uh, I'll see you after this quick break, where we'll get handsy. See you soon. You will notice slightly different camera view than before. Um, I need because this. The details and things on this are so fiddly. I thought I'll bring the camera right in close. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is my old slightly wobbly A4 chopping board. And it's pretty much the whole screen, isn't it? So we've got a polystyrene cement, my crappy old brush, my trusty knife, a pair of tweezers for pinging small pieces across the room, and a needle file with a round end and a flat end. Just in case, I've got my trusty kitchen roll in case I knock the glue over. We have a Phoenix model. We have a small sprue of hands, which you can just see are numbered. 1 through 7, 8 through 14, 15 through 23, missing number 20 because we've already fitted it, and 24 through 30. So technically 29 details. Right, and uh, I think we're going to begin uh, with the missing number 20, which, of course, if you recall, is fitted there in his cloaca. But yeah, I figure we're going to start with uh, these ones around here and around here. Now, I am going to be using a guide, which you can find at the Build Kingdom Death website. Don't ask me what it's called. It's been ages since I've looked. Um, it's either Kingdom Death build or build kingdom death but if you google it you'll find it and yeah i'm just going to be using uh, those as a guide so we want for this one 17 which is that one 18 which is that one 29 is that one so those are the first three we're going to fit so 17 18 Let's get on that right and keep them in order. And 29. Right. Mr. 17. Right. I'm place it on the mat and trim those little hands up just a little bit. Take some of the little nubs and things off. 17, 18, it also has one at the back there, let's tidy that up, yep, that's good, and 29 has this one at the back, put them over just in case, and... Oh, these are fiddly. A little bit there, is that just a mark or is that actually a thing? No, I think that's just a mark. Right, so number 17 needs to be. Oh, let's open up my polystyrene cement, my trusty mech pack. Number 17 needs to go in hmm, which one is it? I think it's that little crease there yeah mm. let's stick something in there Yeah, 
doesn't look right, it's upside down. Let's, see. Let's spin him round a bit. We are going to have to get in there with the tweezers. When he goes, it'll only go one way. Oh, we're going to have some fun with this. See? Told you we're going to lose them. They're going to go absolutely everywhere. Yeah, it's dried off now. Twenty-nine to go. Eighteen wants to slide into this big socket up here. So let's see what we can do with that. Easier. Twenty nine is quite a long, thin one, and I'm thinking it is that one there. Just there. Uh, three down, 26 to go. All right. Where next? Number one, I think, will fit into there. And number five will go in this socket in the end. So let's start with those. Number one, three, four, and there's number five. Yeah, the biggest problem with these is there's just Nothing to hold on to. Definitely need tweezers for this particular job. 
hoop. Right. Gonna have to go on a bit of a hunt for that one. Bear with me. And we are back. Let's try that again. With slightly less ping, I think. These pieces are just so tiny, there's there's nothing to hold on to. Right, so that's that one done, and it was number one, wasn't it? And that, I believe, will slot into this little triangular shaped hole here. That one had a definite socket, which makes them a lot easier to get into the right place. We like those. Two more. Uh, 21. Which would be this one here. And 19, which is on there. Fortunately, there's not a huge amount of flash on these, it's just chopping off the bit of sprue. Right, so 21 needs to go into that socket just there. And 19 will go into that socket there. So let's start with 21. Sorry, just get the gloop in there. I think actually this camera might be a little too close, so I'll move it back in a second. But this is another one that has yeah a big socket to it, so it straight in. Take off some of that excess. Now, because these ones are so fiddly, I'm not playing around with um, dry fit, as you probably noticed. I just want to make sure that they go in. So it's finding the, the right socket and just hoping that whoever set it up did it right. Thus far, I have to say they did a pretty good job. But yeah, uh, before we do the next one, I'm going to pause the camera and bring it back just a fraction. Okay, uh, the camera doesn't actually look that much different, but I've pulled it back and I've used the zoom function a little bit. Right, uh, number two. Is another one with a nice big socket, so I'll just tidy that up. <sighs> and 
and funny enough there's a nice big socket just in the middle there and that's where he's going Where next? Let's go with 13. 13 is this one here. After 13, it will be number 7. And then it will be number six. <sighs> well caught. Incidentally, if I do lose any of these, I do have a backup plan. Because the uh, survivor kits come with various extra hands and things so I was just going to chop off one of those and make it fit see if I can get away with it and not have to so much the better but Yeah, that seems to fit. Number seven is going in that hole there. So I'm just trying to look at the uh, the shape of the base. This one does seem to have a definite shape and as luck would have it I got it right first time and the same with this one which is going in there which is kind of a triangular shape that would be there Getting there, we're running out of holes. Let's take a look at the back of the wing now. Let's see, we've got a couple of holes there and there. And what's that one? start with those and then see where we've got gaps so that would be number three that's going in there Let's start with that one
pretty easy. And number four goes in that next big hole. And that looks to be quite a deep socket, so hopefully we'll luck out there. Just trying to get the camera to focus on the light there. Don't stick to me, stick to the camera. Stick to the camera, stick to the wing. grasping hands but I think that's the wing done so now we're on to this one and we want number 12 and number 9 so there's number 9 oh nice big peg on the back Nine and twelve is that one. Not such a big peg. Right, so there's a nice big hole that that one's going into. So let's start with that. believe is going in that socket just there still still some sprue that needs trimming back no 
so you must be the other way. Yeah. Yeah, there's kind of a half socket which seems to be where the thumb sits, but it still doesn't, doesn't look right. seems to be in the right place. Just it doesn't want to go. Uh, it wasn't lined up, you just got to shove it in get it to fill that gap. It's kind of an odd angle, but it seems to fit. So, who are we to argue? Twenty four fits into this big piece here, I think. No. It's that big piece there, so we'll get that one in next because that's a double, so that will give us uh, 24. Yeah, it's this one here. And I'll start eliminating holes, which, as we know from Kingdom Death, is only ever a good thing. The less, less holes this game has to poke things into, the better. Also a nice curved piece, so it should fit in only one way. Yeah, it doesn't fit in that way, so we'll reverse it and dink straight in. Uh, number thirty. Which one are you? Your that end. And this is another one that seems to have a bit of an odd shaped socket and peg. So. again yeah only really one way that will fit so it slides straight in <sighs> can only get more complicated from here number 11 is this one fit into that small triangular recess just there
23. Um, where are we, 23? That's this one on the end. That seems to be another fairly distinct shaped peg, so hopefully we can find that one without too much trouble. thin one so I would guess yeah that's going into that hole just just there in hindsight it might have been easier to do all these with the wings not attached oh well live and learn and yeah that one slides straight in job done Twenty-five, twenty-five is that one. Another big peg. Which peg is it? One that starts clean as I first thought. Kind of a D shaped, slightly lopsided D shape. And we have two lopsided D shapes. And it's going in the bottom one of the two. And that's the flat side, so it's the awkward way to get it in, but it's there. You see it's all reaching down. And number fourteen is this one at the end. Number 14 is going into, I don't know how well it will come up, just here, there's a slight recess just there and it's going into there. sure which way around it's supposed to go. Hand out or hand up? No, that doesn't seem to work, so probably not that way. Ah, there we go, it's sort of grabbing. Is that right? No, I don't think it is. Oh, there we go. It's not quite as flush with the uh, with the wing. It's more upright, extending from the wing kind of deal. <sighs> and then we got left one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Number 
22 is this one here, and that's also got a bit of a peg, so yes, that would be the other D socket, that deep one there. And there is a definite flat side to the D. Just going to manipulate the hand around, and that should then just, yeah, there he goes, straighten the hole. And number 10 is this one, which looks kind of odd. It also doesn't look like it's got much of a socket. These are always the pigs. Where might you be going? Here, maybe? I think it's there. But it more sits on the wing rather than in it. Uh, five to go. 27, which should be, yeah, the bottom one. And number eight, which is going to be this one on its own. Twenty-seven slots into that socket just above the thumb joint. These things are in some very weird angles. That does seem to be how it goes. Upside down, backwards, and all twisted round. But there he is. Yeah, there should be a socket somewhere around there. I think it's there. There is a tiny groove. You come up from that hand, follow it up to that hand, and then directly above that is this little groove here. I think it's that, because there's no socket at all on that hand.
Thema. Right, the last three. Let's start with 16, because he doesn't like starting in the middle. Again, seems to be a bit of a peg on this one, so hopefully finding its space won't be too difficult. But we're now looking at the top of the wing. And yeah, 16 goes into that nice big socket there because it's got a nice big triangular base. Pin, socket, peg. Peg's the word I'm looking for. It's a triangular peg. I'll fix that in post, as they say. And by the looks of it, it'll only go in one way because one of the sides of the triangle is round and the others are pointy. That's that one. 15 next, which is the one out here all on his own. Um, he lives in where exactly? I think is in yeah he's in that little groove here better. Yeah, there we go. So we have but one left. Poor lonely twenty six. No, let's reunite him with his friends. So I'm not seeing much of a peg on this one, so he's undoubtedly going to be a peg trying to work out where he goes. I do not see any kind of socket there at all. Hmm. Can we get one in the wrong place? That's a question. Because I think he's supposed to be here. Which begs the question, where is that one supposed to be? Because I don't see any more ha uh, holes. Let's have a quick look around to make sure we haven't missed anything. Well, I've got it upside down. It's here, this side, isn't it? Is it this side? Yeah. I think he fits. Yeah, over the top of that hand in there.
hands within hands. Because, you know, the hands weren't freaky enough. Yeah, there you have it. 29 hands and one cloaker of three. All fitted to this rather fiddly model in the Kingdom Death range. Now, as I said, that was a bit of a pig to do. So hopefully you found... Let me just look at all those hands. Hopefully you found this video useful. Because even with the diagrams, it was difficult for some of these to work out just where they go. But we got there in the end. And then you have him. So, if you found this video even remotely useful... Give it a thumbs up and uh, that'll help me get the channel noticed. It'll help the series. And it encourages me to keep doing stuff like this. Um, hopefully you found the close-up view more useful, particularly with this fiddly one. Uh, leave a comment on the video to let me know your opinions on that one. Maybe this is the view that we'll use from now on for some of the modelling stuff so you can see more of what I'm actually doing and less of just the board in general uh, or the table in general I should say um, but yeah give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so which you can do by clicking on the hamster down here or the subscribe button which is somewhere around I don't know depends what you're looking on I guess um, and I'll see you in the next video this is Super Hamster signing out thanks for watching bye for now Bye-bye.